I want to talk to you about staying focused, the importance of being focused in your life. Focus is an incredible uh, study uh, because it, it impacts your life much more than you think it does. A lot of people, they may not, they may not recognize it or realize it, but I'm just telling you um, what, what makes the difference in the movement of your life, generally speaking, is the focus of your life. And if you can stay focused, things happen. Where things stall out is where you lose your focus, and it's where we kind of hear words like distractions or whatever the case is. Suddenly, you're not moving forward because being focused is the, is, is the engine that keeps things moving in a specific direction. And that's just the way life is set up. I want to read you a couple of scriptures today. Okay, Jesus talked about something. I just want to read you. I don't usually read a lot of scriptures, but I think this is really important for for this particular subject. Jesus talked about. He said. Uh, he said the the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye be single, then your whole body is full of light. But he said, if your eye is evil or splintered because of of uh, uh, because of what it does to you. That's why he calls it evil. But if it's evil, then he said, your whole body will be full of darkness. Therefore, uh, if the light is in you is darkness, then how great is that darkness? Um, so so I, I want to spend just a couple of moments talking about this, this uh, clarity, this uh, focus, vision that you have. If your eye is single, now, you know what it might be from being single or plural. I see one thing and, uh, um, and that's being single, but whenever, it's, whenever I, my focus is splintered, uh, that's, Jesus called that evil. Now, in this sense, he's talking concerning hearing the word of God. I mean, what, what these people had seen was splintered. You know, they saw God and they worried. Uh, and it was Jesus was having to clear that up. He was saying, you know, if you see God doing things for you on one hand, and then you're worrying like crazy on the other, he said, it's, things are going to go bad. As a matter of fact, James called that being double-minded. Uh, being a double-minded man, he said, is unstable in all other ways. I wrote this down too, because this is from the Amplified. It says, a double-minded man is unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, and decides. For such a person should not think or expect that he will receive anything of the Lord. So the, 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 the focus there is being single-minded on your trust in God. But it's much more than that. It's a principle. Now, let me just go ahead and clarify on down what he said, because he went down in the next verse said, you can't serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other, you're going to hold the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. In other words, you're trusting in God. There's a singularity about that. Don't allow yourself to be distracted to where you're trusting God and you're worrying about this other. He said, therefore, I say, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat, the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? So he's, he's, he's talking about the people whose eye became distracted. They're, they're focusing on God, but yet they're also focusing on the problems. And then he said, why do you take thought for raiment? Now that's how you lose your focus as you begin to take thought about things. That's how you worry about it. Things are happening in your life and you start worrying about it. You start what the Bible would call taking thought. And he talked about God's provision. A lot of people just worry about that. They believe in God. They're really trusting God. But at the same time, they're looking at out of the other side of their eye, they're looking at how bad things are. He said, he, he said, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. 
Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. How beautiful they are. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought. In other words, stop getting your thoughts focused away from one thing onto another. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? That's what worry does to you. You know that? Worry splinters your focus it's, and, and it stalls out your faith. So he said, he said, don't take any thoughts saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Where will with all are we going to be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek or the people that have no covenant with God. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Set your heart to seek after first the kingdom of God. Set that as a priority. Let that be the focus of your heart. And all of these other things that you maybe have been worrying about, they're going to be added to you. He said, don't take thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. Okay, I wanted to read that just to kind of give you the idea of what it meant to be uh, double-minded, to, to have your focus splintered. A lot of you have had your heart set that you were going to believe God, that you were walking in faith, you were expecting good things to happen, you prayed about it, you've sown toward it, you've done all of the homework on it, you've done all the legwork, you've done good on your foundation, but then you allow your focus to be splintered to where you start taking thought or worrying about other things. And he's saying that, that when you do that, James basically said you become a double-minded man and you won't receive anything from the Lord. You, that, because you, you become uncertain in all of you, the things that you do, you become unstable and restless in everything you think, feel, and decide. That's what the Amplified said. So it's important that you understand the power of focus, not being distracted. Did you ever think about worry as being a distraction? Did you ever think about worry as being something that pulls you away from, from good gracious, what the, the provision that God, God made you some promises. You know, he's never failed you yet, but yet we will hear about some bad thing that's happening. We'll hear about uh, a lack here, a lack there. Good gracious, we'll We'll hear about the fact that Walmart was running out of toilet paper. And so everybody will have a big run on toilet paper. <laughs> oh, good gracious. They're, they worry about this and they worry about that. Jesus called that, that splintered focus. He said, he said that, that is an eye that is evil. And the, the other translations, the NIV, the Amplified, the others... They said healthy or unhealthy. When your eye is single, that's healthy. When your eye is splintered, that's unhealthy. And the reason is, is because of what it's going to produce in your life. Now, if you've got an unhealthy vision about things, then you're up and down. You're like a roller coaster. One day you're going to take over the world. The next day you're thinking, dear God, what in heaven are we going to do? But this is a time for you to set your heart and keep your focus. I'd like to just talk to you just a moment about focus, how important that that is. You were made, you were designed to where you can't focus on more than one thing at a time. You really can't. In other words, I could hold my hand up here and focus on my hand and in the background where you would be is, is blurry. Or I can, I can hold my hand up and look beyond my hand at you and focus on you, and my hand is blurry. You were not designed to focus on more than one thing at a time. And I, I think that there's a real lesson in life that you need to be very clear and focused uh, on what you're believing for, on your relationship with the Lord. But you also need to be focused in the things that you do. You need to be focused. There's a lot of people, they've got, they're, they're so scattered in what they're doing. You know, it's a, what they call the jack of many trades and the master of none. Well, that's really true. I, I remember one time Angie was giving me the, giving me the business because 
I have the ability, I, at least I think, I can do anything. I, I think if I set my heart to it, I can do anything. And she said, you're a man of many talents. But she said that was spelled M-I-N-I, <laughs> which I didn't think was funny <laughs> at the time anyway. But, you know, the fact is, is that, that we can get to the place that we do so many things in a mediocre way. But you're never going to move to the next level until you learn the power of focus. It, I mean, this applies to you on so many levels that focus is the thing that energizes you. Focus is the thing that empowers you. Anyone that has ever reached a place of excellence, they were somebody that was very focused. You know, somebody say, I can play 25 instruments. Well, that's probably true. You know, there may be some people that can do that. But the ones we pay money to go see is the one that focuses on one instrument and they become a master craftsman. You will never be a master craftsman if you don't focus. You just won't. Excellence comes through focus. And I think that's very important. Focus brings intensity. It's, it's a purity of energy and a power. Uh, I mean, it's, it's almost like a, a laser beam. The, uh, what a laser is, is focused light. You know, when I was a little kid, I learned the, the power of a magnifying glass because you could set things on fire by going outside and, and focusing that, the, the light through that prism, through that, through that magnifying glass, it focused down to a very intense light. It took the outside light and focused it down to where it was a laser and literally would set something on fire. You know, doesn't that make sense to you for your life? If you really want to develop something in your life, you need to be focused. And the lack of focus will absolutely throw everything out in, out in the left field. I mean, whether it be our trust in God or whether it be our business, whether it be our hobbies, whatever the case is, uh, you know, you're, you are empowered by the ability to focus. And, and that's very important. You know, and I could ask, how much power do you want? What, what do you actually want to achieve in life? And the answer to that is, how much can you focus? You know, I, yeah, I answer that with, with, a, with, another, with another question. You, how much power do you want? Well, it's answered with another question. How much can you focus? How, how much can you be willing to burn bridges? How much can you be willing to not have a plan B? How much can you be willing to set everything off to the side and say, I'm not doing anything but this right here. I'm not doing anything. Listen, if your eye is single, then your whole existence is filled with light. If your eye is single, your whole existence is filled with power. Power to do what? To finish, to take you to the next level. But if your eye is evil, then your whole existence is splintered and it is drained of its power. Now see, I think this is one of the biggest problems that we run into in life, distractions. We've got so many things that distract us in life. You know, I, I want you to, obviously, I want to meet you like we do each day with this because the things that I wanna give into your life is to help you move to the next level of your life. But a lot of people, they just have social media as a form of distraction. They just have it as something. I mean, it's like they mindlessly go through things that gives nothing back to them. And as a result, they're, they're, you know, I've given you this before, you, you, you've you been given time, talent, and energy, and you can do two things with that. You can either spend it or you can invest it. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're investing of ourselves into the understanding about how to guide our life into a more prosperous way. 
into a successful way. And this is why success is so important, but people, success by focus rather, is so important because it leads you to success. The greater focus, I promise, the greater success, and that'll happen for you. But what happens is um, things come into our life and they distract us. Can, can I just tell you this? There are sometimes uh, Satan sends people into your life to distract you, to steal something that you can never get back, your time. I mean, once you, once you spend your time, you can never, ever get it back. And there are some people that are time wasters. They've spent all of their time. Now they're tracking you down so they can spend your time. And they'll call you and they'll go on and on and on. And when they finish, you're thinking, I'm wore out. This is, the, I, I am just absolutely beat here. I mean, you know, and that's, that should, there's your sign. I mean, I'm thinking, what do you need to, to explain to you? People that just sit and mindlessly watch television series for hour after hour. Now, listen, I, I've got to tell you, there are times when I need a break and I would like to just go binge. I would just like to go get me uh, something that's got a lot of sugar on it and sit in front of the television and just binge for a few hours. Nothing wrong with that, provided you planned for it. But when that's your life, it becomes a distraction that the things you need to be doing are not powered. Your, the, the things in your life that are going to be successful are empowered by your focus, your vision. And when you turn your vision towards something else, you, you, you drain the power from that other thing. That's, that's why, uh, uh, what do they say, the best way to kill a vision is with another vision. In other words, the, the best way to draw you off of and, and drain uh, all of the life out of that vision is to turn your focus over here because there's something, fr have you ever seen somebody that they were in something, man, it was going powerful, and it's like they lost interest and turned their attention to something else, and the thing they had been doing, it's almost like it just starts, to, it loses its color, it loses its vibrance, it, it just turns kind of gray and begins to shrivel up. I've seen churches like that. I've seen pastors and ministers like that. They would get burned out or they would get overwhelmed with things and they would go hide in something else. And they turned their focus away from what they were doing and it just began to shrivel. It began to shrink. Your business is the same way. If you, if you draw, there's something powerful about your vision that literally, uh, uh, releases life into whatever you're looking at. I mean, life comes forth from you. Uh, power comes forth from you when you begin to focus on something. You make it live. I mean, literally, it's like you're looking at something that that is lifeless, <coughs> something that is dead, and you focus on it, and all of a sudden, color comes to it. Life comes to it. That's what focus does. Focus empowers everything that you do. And that's why the distractions that, that the enemy would try to bring in your life steals the strength, the power, the life out of what you're doing. And, and I, really, I really believe that Satan brings distractions um, to change your focus. He is after your focus, and that is the truth. It steals your intensity. Uh, it steals your momentum. You know, the big mo. Have you, have you ever seen a football team? Matter of fact, I was watching one time, and uh, there was these two teams that were playing. I forget which ones it was, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but the announcer said, wow, the momentum has shifted. <laughs> uh, and what that meant one suddenly was struggling to keep up and the other one was empowered. So that's what happens a lot of times in your life. The momentum is shifted. And too often, it's shifted away from 
what you're needing to do onto something that is just a distraction. And, and, and your job, your family, let me just tell you something. If you don't feed life into your family, it will shrivel. You're going to have to, you, you, relationship is spelled T-I-M-E. You're going to have to do it. Whatever you're doing, you've got to spend time with. I remember I was 16 years old and I was in Oklahoma City and I worked for um, a greenhouse. Uh, it was a, an interesting job. I mean, this was a big one. And uh, the, the, uh, the owner of the company, he was an incredible man. His name was Mr. Uh, Mr. Fuji, I think was his name. That was so many years ago, wow. Uh, but he gave me a great job. Uh, I, I mean, I just had my license and my job was to go. They supplied uh, a lot of companies with uh, plants. You know, you would walk into the, the foyer of these companies into the entryway and they would have hundreds of plants that were there that were supplied and taken care of by the greenhouse. And so my job was to take care of them. I would, I would go and uh, water the plants, make sure that they were cared for, remove the ones that were dying, put in healthy ones. And uh, yeah, I was just a kid. Oh, Lord, I didn't have enough sense to keep my ears apart. And one of the problems that I ran into was I met a girl well, let me just tell you something. That that was a distraction. Um, <laughs> because what I would do is I would blow into this place. And man, I would just, I mean, you, I, I didn't hardly even leave a trail from where I'd gone through. I'd just water the plants real quick and go on and sneak over and go see her during that time. And... Uh, <laughs> I remember Mr. Fuji one time, he came to me and he said, Jerry, he said, if the plants are going to live, you're going to have to spend time with them. <laughs> and he was serious and, and he knew I wasn't there. Actually, he didn't have to know I wasn't there because I was or wasn't clocking in. He could tell I wasn't there because of what was living and what was dying. And what a life lesson that that is. Seriously, what an incredible life lesson that that is, that if, if, if the plants are going to live, you're gonna to have to spend time with it. If your business is going to live, you're gonna to have to spend some time with it. And I'm not just talking about some mechanical thing that you run in real quick and water it and collect money out of the till and get out of there. If, 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 if you don't focus on it, it won't be alive. It won't live. It'll get gray. Oh, it may live like a zombie after a little while, you know, the walking dead. But the fact is, it won't have any vibrance to it. It won't have any, there won't be any crispness to it. I mean, you can tell when something is cared for and watched over. That's the importance of, focus on what you're doing. I mean, and, and that is so, so, so very important that you not allow yourself to be distracted. And, and, and that's very important. Uh, and if you're allowing yourself to be caught up by, um, by different projects, uh, can I just tell you this? The enemy will project you into oblivion. There'll be more projects come There'll be more demands come than you can, than you have time for. And it'll get to where you don't even have time for anything anymore. You're going to have to guard what you're doing and what you want to live. And I guess that's really one thing for me to ask is, what do you want to live in your life? What are you doing that you want to flourish? If you don't get it, listen, I'm, I promise you, if you don't get it and if you don't, if you don't set yourself uh, to be single-minded on it. If you don't keep your focus singular, then you will allow it to be split off by worry, by fret, by distractions, by hobbies, by phone calls, by vacations. I mean, some people, they can't focus on what they're doing because all they can think of is, I gotta get to the lake. I gotta get to the lake. Well, sometimes you do. 
Sometimes you need to go and have a time that you get away, but you've got to be careful that you're not losing the life source that goes into your business or whatever that you want to live. I, I was reading a book one time on Alexander the Great, and uh, they were talking, they made a statement. They said, um, they said uh, of all the generals that followed him, what an amazing young man, of all the people that came after him, none could come up and match him because they said he had, and I, I quote, this is what they said, Alexander the Great had a heart pain for success. It meant something to him. What do you have a heart pain for? Is there anything that you go to bed at night and you can't wait to get out there after it tomorrow? Is there anything that drives you and pushes you and keeps you up thinking of what can I do? You know, that, that I'm, I'm focused on that. I'm not focused on 32 different things. I've got one thing that I'm focused on. What is the one thing in your life that you're focused on? Because Jesus, again, if I could go back, he said, he said, if your eye is single or healthy, your whole body is going to be full of light. It's going to be healthy. But he said, if your eye is evil, if it's splintered, it's going to be unhealthy. And whatever is splintered doesn't give, it, it doesn't empower. I'm, I'm reaching for words here. Please forgive me for that. Uh, reach for them with me. The reason they call it unhealthy is because it stops living. When your body begins to be unhealthy, there's something missing from it that's empowering it to rise up. I, I don't have the energy. I don't have the strength. Well, what is it that's taking that from you? Is something, are you unhealthy? Do you have some kind of a, a virus? Uh, something that is stealing your, what's, what's stealing? But that's what focus does. That's what being singular in your vision does. It brings health. And don't just get health from such a passive term. It, when, when you are single in your vision, literally life comes out of you. It's like those plants, those, they, suddenly they become vibrant. They're, they're crisp, they're alive. You, you can feel it when you walk in the door. That's someone who's focused. Do you want to be better than anyone else? And I'm not just talking about saying I'm better than some person, but do you want to, do you want to reach a place of excellence? You know, we, are, we live in a world where everybody said, ah, oh, that's pretty good, that's good enough. Sometimes I just crave to watch a master craftsman. I've, I've gone to concerts before. Uh, I went to a concert one time and watched a trumpet player. His name is Chris Bodie. In my opinion, I think he's the greatest ever. He's the greatest. But he focused and focused and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And I'm just telling you something. It's one of the most phenomenal concerts I've ever been to in my life. I, I never heard anything like that before. I mean, when somebody becomes a master craftsman like that, you're thinking, I'll, 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 pay, the, I'll pay the entry fee just to go watch them. But see, we don't see that very often because people are so distracted. It's time for you to come to the next level of your life, of your business, of whatever you're doing, whatever. If you're gonna be an artist, if you're gonna be a musician, if you're gonna be a businessman, if you're gonna be in sales, if you're going to be in whatever, everything is going to rise and fall to the power that you uh, put into it through focus focus. So I believe that if your eye is single, then your whole body, or in other words, everything about you is empowered. That's what Jesus said. But if your eye is evil or splintered or worried about this and worried about that, hey, 
you got, you, you're, you're not going to go very far. You're just not. You were called to something more. I'm excited about seeing something in you. I really do. I believe that with all my heart. God's got things in you. There are things in you that you don't even know is there. I was talking to someone the other day and just kind of joking with them about it because I really believed it when I saw. I said, for your life, you're just in the scratch and sniff stage. In other words, what I was saying was, oh my God, there's so much depth in you that is untouched. It's untouched. And, and you know, many of you are that same way. There's so much in you. Come to the next level. Come on, it's a great journey. Get focused, get focused. And you'll see that it'll change how you dress. It'll change how you walk. It'll change your vocabulary. It'll change your habits, your disciplines. It'll change how you respond to difficulties. When you get focused, you're empowered. Suddenly you're empowered at a higher level. And I'll just say this one more thing. You will instinctively draw people to you that have that same passion because I guarantee you success leaves a trail and there's a lot of successful people that are looking for successful people. How do you know successful people? You find people that are focused, intense. You find people who love what they do. You find people that aren't scattered in the 36 different directions. You find people who know where they're going. Isn't that what you want? You will draw people to you that are just like that if you'll set your heart with it. Okay, that's what I've got for you today. I hope this, is, I hope this makes sense to you. This is something that I, I really felt uh, was very important for you as you, as you begin to move. As we're, we're getting out of one year and we're going into the next, I, I think this is very key for, for you that you really set your heart as to where you're going, as to who you are and to where you're going. I need to know those two things. I need to know who I am and I need to know where I'm going. And that's very important. And you need to get focused on those things. All right? I love you guys. I just want to say thank you for being with me. Um, thank you for being a part of this. Uh, I'm going to ask that you please like and share and subscribe. That's, that's, that would help me as I'm trying to uh, help as many people as I can. I want to say thank you for being my friend. Uh, I, I treasure that. I really do. Thank you for being my friend. And uh, I want you all to be praying for you and, and thinking about you. And I'm going to be back tomorrow. So I want you to have a great, focused evening. <laughs> God bless you.